Hello everyone and welcome back to the Spearhead cast with me, Matt. We have a 1v1 for you all here on Stalingrad. A 1v1 map from Vanilla Company of Heroes 2 that I don't see a lot of, but it's a very good urban map with a lot of cover. Not that many guys in the buildings, actually. Let's go through the players. Representing the Germans today, we have TKD, the Kettengrad driver, I believe it's an abbreviation for. Playing as Infanterie Division for the Wehrmacht today. Going for a typical 1-1-1 one, one, start with both Grenadier and the Grenadier. Representing the Soviet Union. We have F-31.81. Playing as Rifle Division, oh god, for the Soviet Union. So that's going to mean a lot of Soviet infantry in the field and a lot of conscripts for very cheap and fast. Kind of one of the big advances of playing as Rifle Division for the Soviets. So Infanterie versus Rifle. That is generally a good choice in urban environments, I feel, because... Infantry forces are a lot more valuable than the armored vehicles. These kind of tight and heavy covered corridors, so to speak. We'll have to see how all these conscripts are going to do when they get onto the field. They should allow the Soviets to grab a lot of territory if fast. Especially because the Germans have done 1 1 1, so there's still one unit less. And it's soon going to be two units less. That said, if territory and coordination is done well by the Germans, they should be able to outmaneuver and deal with the Soviet infantry. Oh, Conscripts have already engaged there with the Vox Grenadier. But the Molotov is going over the wall. Very good one. That's definitely going to be a problem for the Germans, but only killing two of them. But the Conscripts could get into another position here. One flash is being prepared. But missed. And that's not the kind of engagement the Germans want at that point. So if it's cooking into the building there, but it might not be wise. That's definitely not a fight the, the Pioneers want, I feel. Oh, another Molotov! Oh, hitting the Pioneers, almost killing them. That's going to force them to pull back. We also have a seven, second box Grenadiers coming onto the field. Where is it? It's there. Panskos are catching more ground for the Soviet Union. We have the Grenadiers up here. In a pretty decent spot, not entirely fully covered. I think they can get behind the bus there. But I'm not actually an expert on this map. I haven't actually played it a lot. Said they're running over here to watch this car, I feel. Yeah, that's also a good spot. Take the cover. But the Soviets are starting to be a problem here. They have the most Grenadiers in the crossfire. The Soviets have a really good advantage early on in uh, infantry fights, and especially on 1v1s and small maps, if they have a lot of conscripts. They can just overwhelm the battlefield, really. The Germans will have to be very cautious with how they use the infantry. The Grenadiers have actually taken heavy losses up there. Down to three men. But they, have, they might still win an engagement. Oh no, not after that shot, I feel. I think these Grenadiers could get cut off. Yeah, they have to run. That might not be a good idea because the conscripts are moving to intercept. Ooh, this could be the end of those Grenadiers. Yeah, perfect interception there. One more shot, that Grenadier's down. Yeah, there he goes. Ooh, that's, that's costly. But we do have some new Grenadiers coming out on the flank here. But we also have some more conscripts ready to throw Molotov. It's been cancelled. But I think the Grenadiers will win that little engagement there. Now the Vox Grenadiers and Pioneers are moving in. One conscript down, but for the loss of one Grenadier, I think that's worth it for the Soviets. So it's also shift shifting over to getting Fonto Vicky now. All professional troops of the Soviet Union, which can take the fight much more easily. We're also seeing MP40s being equipped on the Vox Grenadiers. Generally a good choice in these kinds of close quarters environments. They could have gone for the Sturm Gewehrs, but they're very expensive to get. The MP40 is definitely a much more economical choice, and I think might be very handy these close quarters engagements overall. Because I think that technically it gives the Vox Grenadiers three MP40s, because the squad leader also has one. No! Only two MP40s looking at it. Huh. Very fascinating. Those Grenadiers are oh, the. Oh, have to get out of there. MP40s might intercept. Oh, it looks like they're going for the munitions points. I guess the Germans need the munitions at this, at this part of time. But Pioneers hunt down the conscripts. We have Strelki on the field now, Afonso Vicky, armed with SVTs. Ooh, that's going to be a bad position there for the Vox Grenadiers. Need to jump over the cover again quickly. There we go. And they need to get out of there. Ooh, will they get out of there? Enemy forces are a sector. No, they didn't. Oh, the Germans have taken heavy losses already. It's not looking good for the Wehrmacht. Now the Soviets are getting into some good positions here. Visualization of the SVT is definitely a good decision. As the SVT can really improve the firepower of a German squad. 
Well, not a German squad, a Soviet squad. Oh, my mind is all over the place. It's my first weekend after my internship, so I am a little bit doozy at the moment. I really feel like I've been using my, my body a lot more than I normally do. Most clearly, I have an engagement here with the conscripts. Volks might win that, but as you know, that's a Molotov. And all Cypers uh, are going to flank. Those Volks definitely have to get out of there. Continue keep being replenished. You also have an infantry officer arriving here now for the Germans. If you're playing as Wehrmacht, I believe your officer is a lot more combat capable as infantry. They could be armed with some Gewehr 43s to help. Which I think will probably be a good choice in this kind of environment. And indeed, they're getting a Gewehr 43. Let's see how the Leutnant can do to help the front line. Okay, well, for the Soviets, we also have a Kapitan arriving to coordinate the battlefields in the streets. More Grandiers in the field are great going out from the Sabbath, but the Grandiers will be positioning. Getting up behind the cover here. Both Grandiers are there, but here comes the Leutnant to supervise the front line. You can see him there in, in, in the sniper model for Vanilla. Make him stand out. I hope that the uh, Spearhead somehow implements the new skins that were added in uh, the last real commander update for Company Heroes 2 before Company Heroes 3. And added a few new skins for some of the infantry. Would be good to see overall. The officer has to get into position here. Be cautious though, because this is a fun to figure the SVTs. E70 coming onto the field for the Soviet Union. That's a lot of firepower coming their way. Here comes the Leutnant, using his Gewehr 43 to his advantage. Cutting down the Fontevigi. Very nice job there from the Germans. We also have a Panzerjäger coming up, probably in anticipation of a vehicle. PBSH 43 is being equipped under the conscripts. Can be provided to them if they're veterans too, I believe. Yep, which can really improve their firepower, by the way. Making them super lethal in close quarters engagements. But the T-70 will definitely be a problem unless this Panzerjäger can help. Of course, have to relocate quick. And he is taking up fighting positions here. Using the sandbags in the field to the advantage. And here's the Capitan. Panzer trying to throw a Molotov. Looks like it might work. Very good throw. The Panzer has to get out of that. It's an opening the Soviets definitely wanted. Ooh, there's a mine! Very nice, there's a shoe mine. I completely missed that. But it looks like the Germans have managed to sneak around to the field down here. We also have the elite rifle guards coming in. And we also have Jaegers coming out now for the Germans to counteract that. Jaegers are very good long range infantry. I'm not sure how good they'll do in urban environments. I don't think that's kind of the environment Jaegers are trained for. But I'm no expert. I believe they are used for rough terrain and such. Not exactly fighting in cities. That would probably be the job of the stormtroopers, which. They can also get as infantry. Probably they should have gotten the stormtroopers, in my opinion, but I am not an expert on we what Wehrmacht troops are the best. I actually don't play Wehrmacht that much. Well, mine's been, uh, so mine's been hit by the Soviets. Here comes the Jaegers. Arriving here with their car 98s. So I think the leader has an MP40. Oh, actually, they all have car 98s. Okay, it's a really good long range squad. They've also been all told fire. Probably uh, intending to set up an ambush somewhere. Would be fascinating. More mines being laid here by the Soviet Union. Jaegers oh. in position here. Throwing a grenade. But uh, the Kunskus got them in a very good spot there. And well, up here we have a big fight forming up soon. Oh yeah, this is not looking good for the uh, Germans so far. Flamethrowers being prepared by the Sappers. And now the PBS-80 is here and the conscripts are really showing off. Sappers moving up the flamethrower. Oh, 
You must find a flank, but it is a mine, I just don't know it's there. Uh, it looks like the Soviet Lloyd then the tenant gets killed. Hans Seeker firing. Oh, they, oh, and mine goes off. Ooh, not looking good for this for the Germans there. And another interception here. That could be really bad for the Germans. Especially if they use, lose the Panzerjäger. Yeah, Panzerjäger goes down to the PPSHs. Ages. Well, the Leutnant might get out of there. But Germans have mostly been pushed back to their base now. Most of them are their base defenses at this point. Ooh, the Russians have done a very good job here early on. Germans will need to find some way to regroup and make a comeback from here. They're already building their Waffenkammer now. Might be a little bit late on that. I'm not sure. And the Diaz seem to be ready to move out again, though. And the Leutnant is still preparing his retinue. That's just pulling back. I think one of them has a Gewehr 43, actually. Or two of them has. Oh, we have the Capitan holding up inside the building. Jaeger's again trying to get into a position. Probably not the mo most ideal, but it'll suffice. And that's got some good shots in. But here comes the rifle veterans. Armed with some PPSHs with stick magazines. And that'll definitely be a problem for the Jaeger's at this range. Grenade going out. But that grenade might have saved the Jaegers. Okay, well up here we have the Germans trying to move up again. They actually killed the sappers, I missed that. And the mine has been laid. So it's back at base, it's taking up for tanks though. Well, medium tanks, they already have access to light tanks. They have the T-70. Also, Soviet Kunsk has been armed with the PPSH-43, with drum magazines. Which can really make these conscript squads a lot more lethal. I think we've already seen it really show itself off. Ooh, nice, using the terrain to jump over there. You also smart good ideas here, Veteran C3. He's getting to a cover position. Yeah, we got Oh, the conscripts are gonna mow them down here! Oh yeah, they can also press with the PPSH 43. Losing a great idea squad there, that's painful. Oh, not looking good at all there for the Germans. You're seeing oh, Jaegers cancelled, going for stormtroopers instead. I personally feel the stormtroopers might be the better choice in this kind of environment. You see when you're driving around. And again, it's a position to support the infantry. Leutnant has been targeted. He has to get out of there. Flame throw grabbed here. Oh, by the most but they cleared the mine. Our opponents are seizing a sector. And Kotskis are seizing this point. The Germans are still really just caught up in this point here. They can't really get out. Jaegers have ordered to hold fire. They're not opening fire here. Oh, to prevent the service from getting to cover, but it's too late. Throwing a grenade. Oh, very good grenade. But I think it looks like the looks like the current scripts are losing it. They're running off. Here comes the C70 and the rifle veterans. And say one coming into the field. And he is flanking here alongside the stormtroopers, killing off one conscript squad. Stormtroopers will definitely do a good job if they can get in the right positions. I think some Gewehr 43s and some Sturm Gewehrs could make this squad really effective in this kind of an urban environment. Just need the munitions. And Germany really does not have a lot of munitions at the moment. Right on flanking here with his Gewehr 43s. Panzerbüchse opening fire the T-70, but the Panzerbüchse I don't think has enough frontal firepower to penetrate the front of the T-70. Not at that range anyway. 
Shrapnel round loaded. Didn't do too much. Bones was pulled back to heal, evidently. He has to Panzer F1. Panzer 4 F1, rather. Great try under rifle veterans. Didn't look like it did. Let's look like it did much. Yes, the F1. I don't think the C70 can beat an F1. Yeah, T70 is backing off before it gets spotted. Bombs was moving to, to move alongside it. Also, the Soviets have already gotten the better AT grenades, though. Bombs was on the flank here. Not, uh, not an engagement of Stormtroopers 1 yet, they don't have the weapons for it. At this range, the Stormtroopers are doing well from heavy cover, but it looks like they lost their nerve and are pulling back to heal. Also, squad died there, evidently, with a flamethrower. Looks like the F1 is heading north for us instead. I don't see any other mines. As a TM-35 mine could be the end of this F1. I don't see any mines there. So this is a chance for the Germans to get some territory. The if they act quickly. Jaegers out here in the outskirts using the stone fence. And the flamethrower to clear out this area. The territory is out of contact. This might be the death of uh, a discard script, yep. Minesweeper has been added to the pioneers. I guess they are prepared for more Soviet mines. Yeah, we have a major from the Soviet Union fighting on the field now. The Soviets are calling in like they big officers to hold the front line. He's also a fighting squad if you're playing as a rifle, I believe. Being a six-man squad and all. It's the same if you're playing as infantry for the Germans, actually. You could call in further officers and they'll also be six-man squads, really. But the Major is not really designed to fight on the front line, exactly. F1 fighting against the C70. And T70 goes down. Yes, the Capitan for the Soviets. Oh, Major went down. That's a big loss to Soviet morale, I feel. Who's in their commander? Or one of their commanders. Capitan rushing up here. Rifle veterans coming out as well. That's gonna start suppressing them so soon. Because that's a lot of PPS agents. We have a Lendley's Bazooka! Huh, very neat. Well, the Jaegers are doing their best at long range here, which is the kind of fight they want. Oh, they are all K98s looking at them. Yeah, K98, K98. Oh, no, there is an SV There is a Gewehr 43, actually. Might be the squad leader has it. Mines are still there. Stormtroopers survived. Pioneers can spot the mines, though. He's 34 being prepared by the Soviet Union. Yeah, this long range, the Jaegers are just winning out. Oh, it might have been a good choice then with them. Especially for these kind of areas. Just far too accurate. Oh, looks like the Germans could turn this around. Been very hard for them, though. But it really shows the fluidity of, like, a good battle in Spearhead. I'll just comment here in general how a battle can shift very suddenly. T-34. Goes a bit. That's not a Dushka, that's like the auto machine gun that the some Soviet commands can get. The uh, Stankuai? I am not an expert on this weapon, no, I'm afraid. But like, it's um, it just uses the Dushka model because you cannot have custom models in a spearhead, obviously. It's, it's neat to see. Here's the T-54 leading away. Rifle guards nearby, high explosive loaded. 
Didn't enter the building. Hit some getting in front of it. Hansig again into position. F1 going out to distract. Grenade going out. Immobilized. Very nice. But the Panzer might be in trouble. But that'll definitely keep the uh, E-54 stock for a while. Machine gun opening fire here. Killing that Volkskrad here in cold blood out in the open. As Soviets have to repair their T-34 fast. Thankfully, Soviet tanks can be repaired very fast and compared to the German ones. But the F1 might be going for a flank while it can. So I guess here what to fire on though. Oh, it looks like the uh, rifle guards are taking advantage here. I'm gonna try and use the bazooka. Oh, it didn't hit anything. It hit this uh, lab pole instead. <laughs> But here comes the German infantry again. The Germans could soon start arming the stormtroopers with equipment. He's probably waiting to get give them the storm gewehrs, I feel. E-54 is still stuck. The battalion is also nearby. We have a very big firefight building up here. If if one leads the way. Let's get close to use the heat shell. Heat shell loaded. Ooh, damage the exhaust. That's gonna buy the Germans more time. And it gets the yeah, it gets the crew. Artillery being called by the Soviet Capitan. That's gonna be a heavy barrage. But he has to cancel it. Only the ranging shots will come in, I feel. Some on him. He recruit the T-54 briefly. Keep your vote down. Looks like the F1 has saved the German defense so far. Battlefield looks even now. And soon the Stormtroopers can get their storm gewehrs if that's indeed what we have TKD aiming for. Very good fight so far. Very good play from both uh, both sides. Only ones can be quite intense on some maps, especially a map like this, like with all the tight, narrow areas. Pretty sure how lethal spearhead mod can be. Germans are finally able to tee up from better medium tanks. The F1 is decent, but it will not match an actual medium tank. Well, the T34 is just it's just either unlucky or just not that well suited for this kind of a kind of engagement. What kind of sense are being called onto the battlefield? Because that is the advantage the Soviets have. They can get a lot of units on the field. A lot of infantry. Ooh. Jaegers opening fire, but they could get overrun if they're not careful. They do have a F1 for support. Have a Titans Veteran 5 That's impressive. Ooh, good, good artillery strike there. Well, not artillery strike, but high explosive shell. But Veteran 5 Capitan. Very impressive, F31. Also, Veteran 65 Conscript. That's again also impressive. They could grab a flame from the ground there. That's gonna be the flamethrower. So, machine gun moving up. Being suppressed here by the F1. Ooh, Blend Corbo. Ooh, but the grenade seems like it did more than the Blend Corbo did. Blend Corbo did. The Blend Corbo is more too obscure anyway. Oh, the Stompsons are getting, are getting intercepted. But they got suppressed. And being suppressed probably means they cannot hit. So that was close to losing that Stormtrooper though. Now why the German infantry saw veterans so fast is because they're playing as infantry. And that means you get some veterans upgrades on the infantry for free as you tag up basically. Pretty handy. To be called in here by the Leutnant. Playing for here on the Volkskandalier. 
Probably a good choice considering the urban environment. Yeah, the cover's not gonna help the Soviets here. Cover does not help against the flamethrower. I've been time getting inside the building. We he will kill the Volkswagen here, but is it worth it? Nah, I don't think so. I don't think you want to lose your officers like that. You have a KV-1 coming out for the Soviet soon, okay. So it's calling it a heavy tank. Jaegers is in this building that's about to collapse, probably not the best building to be in. Grenade going out. Yeah, Germans are evacuating it. Probably a good call. Now the F-8 should have big problems against the KV-1. Especially a KV-1E, so this one has 30% more armor. So, uh... I'm not a good math, but that would mean 900, and then add 30% of that to that. So that's a fair amount of armor. The Man Panzer IV coming out for the arm for the infantry division. That'll definitely help against the KV-1. Germans have laid a mine here, though, I think. Yeah. Killer mine, so let's see if need to try and destroy a future tank. He wants to move on the northern road, though. Gotta engage that Panzer IV. Go penetration. As the KV-1 still has the same gun as the T-34-76, so it's not the best, but it has much higher armor. So the... So this Panzer IV is definitely going to have trouble. I don't think there's any AT mines up here. Yeah, so that thing can just drive forward in purity. If one took a shot. Panzer are waiting here. Flamethrower here being re-equipped. Re Looks like the Sabbath won the Flamethrower fight, though. Lots of fighting all over the battlefield here. Panzer 4 Command Tank is present. Antigas could be, could be spotted here, yep. Consequence has spotted them. Right, he is trying to hold back the Soviets here. The enemy is taking we need to watch this KV-1 whenever it does something. And the 4 Command Tank is being very cautious. Probably a good choice. Oh, it's right. He got a shot there in on the KV-1. Didn't do anything. Even when he does have a lot of armor, as I've said. Here when he pushing back. Lots of flame force being handed has been found on the ground now for the infantry. Man tank could get flanked here. No penetration. No penetration there again. The Germans are trying to get close to a Panzerfaust. But you don't have the Panzerfaust, he was just trying to fake it. But we do have the Panzerjägers. We're just gonna fire here. Let it can. No penetration. Oh, penetration from the bazooka right there. The and Panzer 4, if one, if one's trying to flank. Not the best choice, though. Yeah, got hit in the rear, though. I think the K1 has to pull back to repairs, but the F1 it goes down! But I think the Soviets should probably pull back this for repairs. Don't want to risk a KV-1 like that, but it's done a good job so far. It needs some infantry support. It's quite blind without infantry support, but I suppose that's why the Major is now coming up again. Or a new Major. Leutnant is flying. He's a veteran C5, Leutnant. 
Chrome Tobis is coming up too, but it, it, it's Tobias have a flamethrower. Doesn't look like he'll help them this time though. Germans are still not getting that many munitions, but they're holding on. Ah, KV1 is finally pulling back for repairs, it looks like. Now, as Rifle, you don't actually get any new units in here, but you get upgrades like over here to get all your KV1s to be K1Es. Which they definitely did, so. Uh, that 30% more armor is definitely gonna help. Looks like building a sandbag right by the Patella mine, they don't know it's there. You also have a new Cabitat? No. What arrived? I have no idea what arrived there for the Soviets. Both of down here, but they're flanking this machine gun inside the building. Another KB-1E is being prepared for the battlefields. Looks like the, the Soviets are just going to drown the Germans in some heavy armor and push up the streets. Could help. But the Soviets need some more troops on the field, it, look, it, it feels like. Here comes the Panzer IV command tank. And there's also a fight up here. With the Panzerjäger being out, being overmanned. And the rifle veterans holding down the main street. And he's trying to get close here. Looks like it works out. Oh, K1E okay, took a shot there from something. I missed that. Or well, probably from the Panzer IV. But he has to pull back for repairs. So it's are taking heavy infantry losses, but... Oh, there's a mine here, and they almost have the stormtroopers! Ooh, that's a costly one. Repair crews are being operated, good to see. Jaeger's moving up here in the crater. So the Jaeger's doing a good job here. Panzer 4 command tank pulling back for repairs. We also have Panzer 4H arriving. Germans have made a made a comeback here. I need to see if these KB ones can really turn the different, make the difference. I just think the Soviets need to have some more infantry to support them. Pioneers definitely do, lack the equipment to deal with them. That's for sure. Overbleed supply truck coming out. Probably to help with repairs in the field or similar jobs. And so for you just made this self clear. I mean, it's, uh, it's presence known, rather. Being supported by some Jaegers. Jaegers being equipped with MG34. Very nice choice. Generally, I don't see a lot of people go for the MG34 despite it being really good on uh, civil units. Like, German machine guns are always worth having, in my opinion. Oh, good shot from the Panzerjägers right there, immobilizing the KV. It's gonna make that one very vulnerable. At long range, I think the Panzer IV-H will win that fight, actually. To the landing here. Came one came one down, but a second came one is present. It's the veteran one. Good shit there from the Panzer IV penetrating. Doing some damage. KV-1 has to pull back. And now the Panzer IV is slowly pushing up. But the closer they get to the KV-1, the higher chance the KV-1 has to penetrate. But they do have to be cautious. New rifle veterans being called in.
They don't really have a very good squad, these rifle veterans. You just have to babysit them a lot. Yeah, well, the Capitan is securing the center here, or trying to. Secure, Soviets have secured the southern flank again. Oh, Basuga found him the ground by the Vox Grenadiers. Oh, these consoles are falling back in a very wrong angle. That might not work out well for them. Uh, we'll need to see what path they take. Uh, might not be too bad. Especially not with these rifle veterans coming in to uh, potentially be a distraction. Yeah, Kranz just makes it out of that. Here comes the veteran KV-1, veteran T3 now. You could with a spotting scope. You also have a major nearby. That gets buffed by the major, surprisingly, so it actually gets reloads 20% faster. That's pretty good for a tank. Give me that MG-34 arm uh, Jaeger squad. Ooh, that shell did not do a lot of... Actually hit their own major a little bit. A super penetrated the, the KV-1. Water rhyming out for the Germans as well. Quite a bloodbath in the streets we have here. A good play from both players. They're doing a great, a great job here. Good showing. But I think the Germans now have the upper hand. At least it feels that way. Soviets definitely had the early game cover, that's for sure. Third KV-1. Oh boy. That's a lot of heavy armor for the Germans to suddenly have to deal with. Can Germans even deal with three KV-1s? At once? I guess with mines and the proper positioning, perhaps. K1 has definitely got to be uh, quite a test here. Oh, it's been immobilized. Oh, very good shit there from the command panzer. Make it, very, make it very hard for the other KV1s to get pushed through. Looks like he can squeeze through right here. There's the veteran one. Oh, good shot. Who needed injuring the commander? There's still the telemine. Ooh, I, the Soviets don't know there's a mine there. Ooh, they stopped right from the mine! Guess he realized he needed, he needed his infantry support. The mortar's now chilling the area. But they hit front by the Jaegers, didn't do much and hit the building. Well, Jaegers have been armed with the uh, Sturmgewehrs. Going down the conscripts in seconds. KV-1s do have a lot of machine guns. Fun thing. KV-1s and IS-2s, I think, actually have a machine gun on the back of the turret. Which does actually fire. So you actually have a harder time getting up behind the turret because it will suppress infantry. It's a it's a awkward little design, but it works. Oof, that Leutnant does not have any AT weapons. Will the KV-1 hit the mine? Let's look at it well for now. And while we have uh, Jaegers over here being overrun. Veteran KV-1 is still doing a great job here for the Soviets. There we go, second KV-1 is ready again. The third KV-1 is going up here. Many KV-1s. It's 242 coming out here for the Wehrmacht. Oh, they're smoking their approach. Very smart. And I, there's a telemine there, though. Germans are playing it smart. Here. 
But Soviets could turn this around if they act fast enough and the mines don't destroy the KVs. Oh, penetration there. Oh, penetration there from the Panzer IV. Didn't do that much damage though. Second penetration! Ooh! That KV has to back off. And we have another fight over here with another KV. Ray going into the veterans. That's a blend core, but actually. But does get him off. KV wants to hold in the front line against the Germans the best they can. But the Panzer IVs are just too armored frontally at the moment. Panzer Strike might penetrate. Yeah, penetrates and this one KV one down. The Panzer IVs just outranged them at the moment due to veterancy. Oh, excuse me. Let's move my chair. And now the stew down here to take out this building. With the machine gun inside it. It's the terrain though. And this might go down if the stew doesn't fire fast enough. The building goes down. It might actually be a saving grace for the machine gun. Okay, one relocating down here. Because of a heavy more than our rank for the Soviet Union. Starts chilling the Germans in the city. Or the remains of the city. Oh, good shot from the Stu! Yeah, the Stu is really good against the infantry and also just blowing up tracks. Yes, the veteran KV-1. Definitely a much bigger threat. Using its range, it also has a spotting scope. Now it's got firing position, so it can actually go stationary. And it basically uh, set up as a defensive turret kind of feel, where it cannot move, but instead it reloads fast and aims better. Makes it very good as like a defensive bunger, basically. I imagine it's just because the driver is relocating inside to help load, load the gun and such. Oh, this Jäger might be in trouble. Definitely in trouble. Follow charge. Ooh, overshot. Ooh, this is very dangerous. Panzer moving up here. Ooh, got good shot there, destroying the gun. But this KV1 keeps pushing up, destroying the main gun on the Stu. And Stu down. Asuka handed out here to the major found on the ground, right? Another KV-1 being prepared. We have lots of KV-1s arriving here. Let's have a KV-1 stand today. Happy Mortis fine has not killed any squad yet. Oh, Stormtroops have been equipped with Storm Gavers finally. But Heavy Mortar kills him in a single shell! Oh my god! Oh, that's really bad luck for the Germans! Oh my god! Ooh, that's horrible, that's horrible. What are you going out there? Soviets may well ask you to turn off and flank here the best they can. Bongo was set up, but they can get the machine gun upgrade because it looks like. He has not the forward headquarters uh, operate. Which you need to actually get machine guns on your bunkers now, by the way. That's where H is present. Laying down firepower with its MTEs. Lots of German infantry moving this way now. The K1 moving. Getting immobilized by a panzer, which is shot. 
Maybe the other KV1 is pushing up this way. Ooh, and now the Germans might be in trouble. They're facing several KV1 at the same time. Yeah, we do have the uh, Volkskrieg here with the bazooka. It penetrate! They don't have that Panzerfaust upgrade, but this Panzer Force pushing back against the KV. KV can't turn this turret fast enough. Ooh, critical hit! Ooh, this is a close one here. Panzerfaust goes off though, saving the, the Panzer IV. You know, the building here went down in the middle of this fighting. A1 is pushing up. There is still the Teller Mine, but the Soviets don't know that. So we're having more or less back in the base at the moment. Teller being called in here. More guards called in. Actually, that's uh, Fontoviki, my bad. They just used the guards' voice acting. This is a veteran C4K1E you now. It's a pretty skilled Soviet crew. They seem to know what they're doing. Well, the other KV1 is pushing up here. There's still a tiller mine here. Panzer Force moving into position. The Panzer Force needs to coordinate. But so does the KVs. They do have guard support. Ooh, heavy mortar blew up the telemine. Ah, uh, the small gun caliber on the KV-1 is definitely showing here. It doesn't have the pen penetrator power. But Germans still need to be very, very careful. K-1 okay, coming around the corner here. Oh, crew dazed. Oh, and turret jammed and then killed by a Panzerswick. The veteran KV crews down. That was three penetration shots from various uh, weapons and units that took down the KV-1 in very quick succession. So very nice to see. Lloyd Dan still in the front line here with 30 kills to, uh, to his name. Wait, is that 50? That's 50, my bad. <laughs> Looked like a free for me for, for some reason. Double T-3476 is being called instead. Might be the better call. Maybe because they are a little bit more maneuverable. And can flank. Right there from the Hansjägers. I think the German so far has this covered. We'll need to see how the T-34s do though. Ready is pushing very far up here. Might be a little bit of a risky maneuver, but looks like it might pay off for now. K1 down there. 54 rolling out. The T-54 is not going to do much, I feel. Not without support. Actually, a yeah, penetration shot, but then the other Panzer 4 covers it. Yeah, that's a 1T-54 down. Yes, the battle progresses. It looks like the Germans have kind of made the comeback they needed thanks to their Panzer supports. 
And Soviet Rifle just lacks late game equipment to deal with this effectively, I feel. At least at the moment. Like, so, uh, Wehrmann Infantry is a really good commander that scales very well into the late game. Well, Soviet Rifle kind of loses its edge once the early game is over. Like, in team games, Soviet Rifle is amazing, simply because of the sheer amount of field presence you can provide to your team. But like, in a 1v1 at this moment, it looks like the Germans have kind of counteracted... Counter... Uh, <sighs> countered them, that's the word, yeah. Jägers with Sturmgewehr is pushing up here against the Major. They'll definitely cut him down in very short order. Yeah, my Major completely cut down the open there. I tried to say sandbags, you don't want to do that while under fire, by the way. Makes you a lot easier to kill, shoot and kill. Especially not with guards of all things. You don't want to do that with elite infantry. Our opponents are seizing a sector. Good shot there from the Panzer IV. Jaegers pull back thanks to the heavy mortar. Everyone has to be very cautious though. That's a four down. You must have done a great job here against the Soviet tanks. Heavy mortar is in a, is in a position where it could be shot at though. And now the Pioneers pushing up with the Gebal de Ladnung. That might be the end of it. Good Bazooka shot almost killed them. Yeah, Gebal de Ladnung finishes it off. Radius on the flank here, and the Leutnant moving up too. It looks like the situation is firmly under German control at this point. But there's still a chance. You never know. Oh, I got my drink here. Might as well take a little bit of a sip. <sighs> and a little bit of uh, dry throat at the moment because I've been talking this this long. So we still have a good income though, thanks to the Soviet rifle. Until we called in the night of building forever now as it's on fire. Stormfruit is pushing up. With their Sturmgewehrs. Oh, good grenade from the Fonseviki. Ooh, that might not be good for that Stormtrooper. Yeah, Stormtrooper down. Stormtrooper is present here. Uh, Stormtrooper's Jaegers. Uh, it's a little bit annoying when uh, all of them seem to be using Sturmgewehrs. But so far, not a lot of action right now. The service they need to build up again, but they're almost not really pressing their attack. I guess they need their more infantry support at the moment for, before they push up with the panzers, which is the wise thing to do. Building collapses from the fire. So the Capitan has to be very cautious here. That's a four moving up here to intercept. And more both gradius out here in the streets. And this Capitan is probably gonna die. Yeah, definitely not gonna die. Yeah, it's service losing a lot of officers. This gun being called in. Basic Soviet field gun. And here's all the German infantry. Trying to pull up together, being led by the Leutnant. Artillery being called in here by the Stormtroopers. 
The storm is, storm is for the infantry can actually call in a rapid brush that has no um, wind up time. So it's pretty handy. Oh, but the Soviets are still losing ground here. The German infantry is just pushing up bit by bit. Uh, it's just up to these veteran guards, and they don't have any—they don't have enough equipment. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. And they're getting cut down there. The well, their Panzer Four commands—that's not a command sign. That's the H. Pushing up. Oh, good shot from the Bazooka here from the Sappers. So the Lendley's Bazookas are still working out a little bit for the Soviets. So it's definitely having to work a lot, a uh, lot harder, especially at this point. Just a normal mortar now for the service, not a heavy mortar. Just to go a little bit more economical in this. Veterans to five conscripts on the field here again. Would be equipped with the PPSHs. Just that they are getting something else. They're getting another guard infantry. And another KV-1E. The KV-1E is probably a good choice considering how well the last one survived compared to the infantry force. But just having one of them on the field at a, at a time I think is the best choice instead of just getting too many of them. You really need it to work as the anvil and then you need to get something else to work as the hammer. What is the question? Firefights across this area. The light line is definitely having the underhand out in the open, but uh, up here, I think the stormtroopers have the upper hand due to the heavy cover and long range. Especially against conscripts. Oh, uh, Soviet lieutenant went inside the outpost here. Okay. This is being on standby at the moment. KV-1E on is on the field. Now there's 242 coming out here. Lieutenant trying to flank. Look at in a better position right now. The bother. Oh, good. The bother long position. Oh yeah, very good, very well positioned. Right there from the conscripts that they retreat. Very good grenade too. Okay, when he has to decide where he wants to stay and fight. This is, the Germans are slowly encroaching on the base again. This relocates to the southern flank. up for an overwatch position there. We're spotted briefly loading a high explosive shell so the Jaegers are running. Here's the KV-1 as well with guards infantry to support it. Hansk of securing some more ground for the Soviet Union alongside some Montoviki. Also, the Stu 242 here again. Basically, it's a Stuk chassis with a. Um, well, not really a Stuk chassis because a Stuk is actually built on a Panzer Free chassis, if I remember correctly. But it's essentially a howitzer instead of a, a normal gun. Well, a cannon, rather. But it's good at dealing with infantry and structures and similar. Ooh. Oh, I cannot see them. Now that might be a dead front of Vicky. The enemy is taking our territory. Killed the border though. <laughs> I guess Stu is really good at holding down the streets. That's definitely uh, what he was intending here. Putting it here to like cover this angle. 
He won't make his move. Fresh guards, troops are standing by. Oh, good shot! That's definitely driving the Panzer IV back. And these guards do have uh, stolen Panzerfausts. Yeah, he's pulling back immediately. He realizes what's going, going to happen. But maybe on the northern flank, Germans are pushing up with the infantry. Oh, Panzer IV is in big trouble. He's trying to catch up to it. And he gets it! Panzer 4 H down! Double Panzer 4 H being prepared in in a retaliation attempt, I feel. But German infantry still winning big. And pushing out on the other flanks. So one small victory for the Soviets is not really gonna matter here. But the Germans are definitely winning uh, across the battlefield. Guards taking the long way around to retreat, able to avoid being intercepted. Oh, but they might still be intercepted here by the Jaegers. Uh... They will. They'll die here. Yeah, mowing them down in seconds. Panzerfaust, facing it, and then the Stu is going in for a flanking shot. Missed because it's trying to shoot on the move. And German tanks don't have a stabilize. Heat shell loaded. Ooh. Didn't actually kill it, but destroyed the gun. And then that one high explosive shot to the rear S section destroys it. Really well played from uh, both players. Soviets have done a lot of work. Despite the situation I find them in at this point. A steady as this is a uh, pretty brutal fighting. Germans also had it really hard early on, so good to see the Germans also make a comeback. Like this battle shifted a lot. But at this point I feel the Germans are getting ready to just drive in and end it. They're building up the Panzer force they need for a breakthrough. They almost have it. They have the infantry support. They just need to make a push simultaneously. And the Stu is definitely helping against the Soviet infantry to clear them out. Stu is moving. Jaegers move up. Panzer 4 H behind. Storms is pushing up to the sandbags. Here comes the stew. Oh, good high explosion shot right there. In. That's how we landed it. Calling in there. High explosive grenade. Well, AT. No, that's not a normal grenade. No, use the. There we go. AT grenade destroying the stew. It's a Soviet AT grenade that are handheld. If you get the upgraded one, it's actually really powerful. Even 476 being prepared. They're being prepared by the German lieutenants. Germans have almost captured every territory on the map now. If they take this sector, they actually have the entire map. And they really just have to push it on the Soviet base. Here's the last T-34 coming in. I am assuming it's the last one. Because I don't think the Soviets have the fuel income to get another. Not as the battle is standing now. Our headquarters is taking enemy fire. What's going to be called in on the Soviet base? Get for pushing up here. Aim for some kind of flank. 
Right, uh, Jaegers to cover it. That's the Panzer Fall. Oh, the T-54 is not giving up. I don't know if that's a smart move, but there's not really anything else they can do, so... It's probably planning to go into the blaze of glory. Well, a blaze indeed. Definitely a good game. Like, a uh, really nice job to uh, F-31 and take a deep, pretty nice battle. Hope you all enjoyed this bloodbath. I'll see you all in the next day, everyone. Bye-bye.